It's been a little more than a month now since the first votes were cast in the largest democratic exercise on the planet, India's general election. Prime Minister Narendra Modi wants a second term, and his party, the BJP, seems destined for victory. How much of that is due to Modi's genuine popularity, and how much is down to the BJP's sprawling publicity machine is another question. It comes down to the money. Over the past financial year, the BJP's publicity budget has been 20 times that of the main opposition party, the Congress. That's a lot of extra rallies, billboards and social media ads, all spent to brand Modi as the leader Indians need, the antithesis to what the BJP calls the country's weak, anti-national and anti-Hindu opposition. Throw in a few dozen celebrity endorsements, Bollywood style, a mainstream news media, most of whose support the BJP gets for free, and that adds up to an election that looks like Narendra Modi's to lose. Our starting point this week is the campaign trail in India. In India, the election story starts with the numbers, and they are staggering. More than 900 million voters, seven stages of voting lasting five weeks. More than 2,000 national, regional, and state parties. More than 8,000 names on the ballot. And more than 400 television news channels, regional and nationwide, covering the election. And based on the media output, one would be forgiven for concluding that this election is about just one candidate, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The BJP certainly has an extremely effective campaigning weapon and an icon in the figure of the Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. And nobody knows that better than Mr. Modi himself. Now, India has a parliamentary election, but since Mr. Modi has arrived on the scene, our national election has repeatedly been described as presidential style. If you see what has happened to how MP candidates are named, that is getting pushed back later and later. You're two weeks away from the date that you're going to go and cast a vote, and you don't know who is standing for elections in your neighborhood. And the only way that works is that you don't care who is standing for elections in your neighborhood because you're voting for Modi. Narendra Modi is not the first person to have made Indian elections presidential. Political parties have benefited from having a strong leader. What stands apart in case of Narendra Modi is that whenever things have gone wrong under other leaders, they were blamed for it. In case of Narendra Modi, whenever things go wrong under him, somebody else is blamed for it. Whereas when things go right, he's the one who takes all the credit. The kind of visibility and name recognition Narendra Modi benefits from does not all come for free. For the financial year 2017-18, the BJP spent the equivalent of more than 80 million US dollars in election publicity, more than all the other parties combined, and that was before the campaign had formally begun. For one period earlier this year, the party spent 100,000 US on Google advertising alone, 10 times more than its Congress party challengers. And Modi's BJP, is also India's biggest Facebook advertiser. Those are among the places the BJP's money is going to. Then comes the issue of where that money is coming from. The BJP has found a way to cloak these funds that it receives in absolute secrecy. It has introduced a new system of electoral bonds which allows for completely anonymous donations. We don't even have a way of tracking who exactly is giving this money to the BJP and why? What are they getting in return? Now, in the last year for which this data is available, the BJP's income was three times the size as the combined income of the next six largest political parties in the country. Now, that's a huge order of difference. And it translates into a massively different spending budget. So the BJP currently spends about 20 times as much on uh, election campaigns as uh, any of the other parties. They've really managed to have a very comprehensive presence from the national all the way to the local level. People are told when they are supposed to put out what content, how specifically to write the words, 
whose content they have to retweet, when they have to retweet it. This is a really massive centralized campaign which reaches everyone all the way down to the ground. That's how effective BJP social media machinery is, social, that their communication skills are. On the other hand, they are up against Congress which is not even close when it comes to its communication skills. They fail in creating a chat around their schemes. Their campaigns start on Twitter and end on Twitter. The BJP, they are also helped by the Hindi media that is smitten by Narendra Modi and that has uh, worked a lot in keeping his image intact. Pradhan Mantri Ji, how's the Josh? Are you confident? The reasons for the mainstream media's preoccupation with Modi range from the commercial to the ideological. The Prime Minister's brand of nationalism and penchant for bellicosity are marketable commodities that play well on the hundreds of news channels that battle for viewers 24-7. In 2014, Modi came into office having campaigned on economic issues, promises of development and agrarian reform. During this campaign, the primary focus has been on national security. Issues like Kashmir and Pakistan and the BJP's interpretation of India's identity as a Hindu first nation. News outlets are also acutely aware that the BJP-led government is the country's biggest media advertiser and the party wields that money tactically. If you turn on uh, any news channel during a prime time hour. Wake up! That's you will destroy your own country in the way that you are going. You're likely to be barraged by sometimes hysterical declarations of loyalty to the nation and to the state and to the armed forces and somewhat implicitly to the ruling party. Hazaro feet ki uchai par barfile tufan ke beech seena taan kar khade hai You could easily say that one of the successes of the Modi government has been to co-opt major media houses, especially television networks, by very careful management of government ad funds, of which media houses are patronized with interviews from ministers or from the prime minister. The media business has always been precarious with what has also happened now. The media companies are now raising revenue by doing events for which they require the attendance of top-level government functionaries, including the prime minister. Now this in turn introduces constraints on the freedom of taking on the government, of holding it accountable, of not wanting to alienate the powers that be. The other medium Modi's BJP has mastered is film. Through the Prime Minister's courtship of Bollywood A-listers, tweeting at them, taking selfies with them, even being interviewed by them. On April 24th, two weeks after voting had begun, Modi had a series of softball questions lobbed his way by Bollywood actor Akshay Kumar, who was playing the role of an interviewer. <laughs> India's election rules forbid such interviews during the voting period. However, the news agency that put that interview out, which is closely tied to the BJP, argued that since no journalist was involved, the interview was not journalism. It was apolitical. What is apolitical when it involves a person standing for elections? <laughs> when you sit through the interview, you realize that Narendra Modi loves mangoes. He was a poor person. He made it a point to, to point that out. My background, my world, my today's politics, I don't sit in that. And uh, it, it highlights how he is a self-made man. And this is really important because the person he's stang standing against, Rahul Gandhi, is the son of a prime minister, he's the grandson of a prime minister, he's the great-grandson of a prime minister. And uh, Narendra Modi comes across in this interview as everything that the common average Indian is or aspires to be. Film actors in India have a long history of being involved with politics. So the involvement of Bollywood isn't entirely new. Selfies of Bollywood celebrities with the Prime Minister are carefully planned, as are tweets that the Prime Minister 
tags film actors is uh, a symptom of how carefully with great attention BJP plans its media campaigns. Though it does make you wonder why a Prime Minister who has so much time for Instagram influencers and to meet and selfie himself with Bollywood stars has not had the time to hold a single open press conference and has been the first Indian Prime Minister to fail to do so in a five-year term.